Hi, I'm Pranamya and you're watching Pages of the Globe. So if you're new to my channel, basically I just read short stories and poems and then I give you some deep analysis about them. And normally with the analysis, I also tell you a little bit about the author, um, the time period that the story or the poem was made in, and what the historical significance of it is. And I do really go in depth, especially in poems, I'll go like line by line and just tell you what each and everything means. So if you are a huge like literary buff, then you will love my channel. Without further ado, let's get on with the story. So the poem that I'm going to be reading today is One Art by Elizabeth Bishop. Now, this poem is so beautiful. It's about the art of losing, which could be like losing things, losing people, losing names, losing places, just like memory, I guess, losing time. And it's about just mastering the art of losing. And I think it's very interesting. It almost reminds me of like SATC, the show, um, and how all of the women, if you haven't watched SATC, it is, or Sex in the City, um, it's a group of four people, four women, and they're on their 30s and they're living in New York City. And it's just about their relationships and how they grow and evolve as they're in their 30s and what the dating scene is like and how they just grow their careers and they're all very successful women and it's so interesting and I think while I was reading that poem it very much reminded me of them because at first the poem started off very like oh well this is you know this I'm very good at losing things this is how I do it this is how I do it and it's awesome but then towards the end you get to a much more like almost i don't want to say sad but it's a much more like specific feeling that's attached to that poem and it reminds me of satc uh, one thing that i want to start introducing within my analysis is analyses i'm not sure um but it is like having connections to other pieces of literature whether that is film any type of media honestly films um, other books, other shows, other poems, whatever it is. And so another connection, because I do want you guys to, you know, continue to read these stories and poems. So if you ever think of another connection or this poem reminds you of something or the stories remind you of something, then please comment it down below. And that, that way I can maybe read it. I can um, give you an analysis about it and if it's a show or a movie I would love to watch it if it's a show or a movie I've probably watched it honestly I'm such a big movie buff and I can relate anything to anything else like it, it's a skill of mine <laughs> anyway um, without further ado let's get on with the story or the poem remember to like share subscribe and comment down below which story you would like me to read next one art by Elizabeth Bishop the art of losing isn't hard to master. So many things seem filled with the intent to be lost, that their loss is no disaster. Lose something every day, except the fluster of lost door keys, the hour badly spent. The art of losing isn't hard to master. Then practice losing farther, losing faster, places and names and where it was you meant to travel. None of these things will bring disaster. I lost my mother's watch, and look, my last, or next to last, of three loved houses went. The art of losing isn't hard to master. I lost two cities, lovely ones, and vaster some realms I owned. Two rivers, a continent. I missed them, but it wasn't a disaster. Even losing you, the joking voice, a gesture I love, I shouldn't have lied. It's evident that the art of losing not hard to master, although it may look like it, write it like disaster. The end. All right, so that was One Art by Elizabeth Bishop. This poem is a villanelle, which is like the style that it's written in, and it's a traditional form that involves sort of fixed number of lines and stanzas, and then it has this intricate pattern of repetition and rhyme. And through this form, this poem kind of explores just loss as an inevitable part of life. We kind of consider what it means to experience loss over and over and over again, 
and whether it is truly possible to even master this experience of loss and grief. Now, like I said before, one R was included in Bishop's final collection of poetry, Geography 3, which was published in 1976. Now, just for a quick summary, what do we really see about? What is this poem about? Well, we read, it's not difficult to become an expert at losing things. So many things seem bound to be lost sooner or later that when they actually are lost, it's not really a catastrophe. Now, to get better at losing, the author says, just try losing something every day. Accept the frustration of losing your house keys or realizing that you may have wasted an hour of your time. It's not difficult to become an expert at this. And then after this, practice losing more and more quickly. Forget places and names and lose track of, for example, places you wanted to go. This won't cause a catastrophe, right? And then we kind of move to this part where she talks about how she lost two beautiful cities. And even bigger than that, some domains that she owned, rivers and continents. And she misses them, but it wasn't a catastrophe. And at the very end, she says, even if I lose you and lose everything that I love of you, this it's this won't have been a lie, basically, is what she's saying. It's clear that it's not too difficult to become an expert at losing things, and though it may, ap- may appear catastrophic, right? So what does it exactly mean? Like, what does this mean? It just, it feels sort of, you kind of have to dig deeper through this poem, is what I'm saying, to really understand what's going on. So it explores the idea that nothing lasts, and thus, like I said before, loss is just this inevitable thing. In fact, we actually see that the author is claiming that with practice, people can learn to accept and even master this quote-unquote art of losing. Now, the speaker doesn't actually seem to be as good as this, at like as good at the art. However, because she's lingering on these details of a beloved person she fears losing in a way that suggests she hasn't really mastered anything at all. I mean, to at the very end, she talks about how in losing this person, losing their voice, losing gestures of them that they love, we see that she's kind of showing that in a way she hasn't mastered this art of loss. I don't know, this part very much reminded me of when you're like watching a movie or something, and the main couple or whatever have broken up and normally it's the guy i think but they'll just be talking to their friends not these single people and they'll talk to their friends and they'll be like oh i don't even miss him or her whoever and they'll be like oh i don't really miss him but like you know i still miss her voice her um the how she would comb her hair whatever right and then like as they keep talking about the little details that they love the audience can see that this person is like obviously very much still in love with their ex, I guess. And I think that is just such a powerful moment. And this poem very much pulls it off in a less like movie type of way, but it's still very romantic. Now, at first, we see the speaker evoke kind of everyday losses that readers can relate to. Like you have definitely probably lost your keys or lost your phone, or misplaced like a lip gloss or something, and even like losing an hour of time or wasting an hour of time, that's something that happens to everyone. And so this emphasizes that loss is just a natural part of life. But then as we progress through this poem, we see that the losses are growing in scale. Now we're talking about more abstract concepts like places, and then we talk about items of emotional value like her mother's watch and three loved houses. So now we're seeing that the idea of loss is broadening. It's rel- She's relating it to life changes that are inevitable with the passage of time. But the speaker is continuing to describe these losses with the same casual tone. And she's still like, oh, well, you know, it's just a part of life. And it's as Though th- these more mundane losses prepare the speaker for her leaving bigger and bigger parts of life behind without spiraling into, I guess, disaster. However, this poem also shows the ongoing effort involved in coping with loss. Despite the speaker's detached tone, as losses grow in scale, it becomes harder to take the speaker at her word when she insists that loss is no big deal. In fact, The poem's repetition actually suggests that loss does feel like a disaster to the speaker, 
since it requires constant work on the speaker's part to claim otherwise. The speaker refers to phrases about mastering loss and loss not being a disaster so often that they actually feel like mantras that the speaker needs to obsessively repeat to starve over. Ultimately, we just see the sense of grief and overwhelming loss implied at the poem's ending, and that sheds new light on the poem as a whole. Where before, the repetition might have suggested that the speaker has mastered loss, it can now be read as representing the speaker's ongoing daily work with coping with loss, suggesting that such work is never-ending. Now, that is it for today. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment down below which short story or poem you would like me to read and analyze next.